You want to know the one gift I gave in my life that almost cost me my life? It's the gift of my presence. I'm sorry, that was a really dramatic intro into the story that I've been wanting to tell for a long time. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to Trevor Talks. Too much. The show where you guessed it, I talk. Get it? It's the show. That's the name of the show. I talk too much. <laughs> I'm your host, Trevor Everett's Master Baker, musical soft boy, um, staunch supporter and celebrator of Arbor Day. It's why are you looking at me like you're about to laugh, <laughs> Jamie? It's an important holiday. Yeah, it's a great holiday. I love trees. Go hug a tree, dude. Do I it. used to climb trees all Dude, the time. Me too. Okay, hold on. Uh, today, well, today we're talking about because this is it all ties together. It's all one big, nice, neat little gift wrapped up in a bow. Because today we're talking about um, some of the best and worst gifts that we've ever received. We're just doing a fun little holiday, you know, something easy. I'm gonna stop talking about my mental illness for a week. Give y'all a rest. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we're just gonna be talking about some, you know, whatever gifts we receive, memorable holiday stories, stuff like that. Um, back to the tree climbing thing. Uh, at the house that I spent most of my formative years growing up in, uh, in Idaho, there was a corkscrew willow tree in the front yard. Okay. Um, if you don't know what that looks like, look it up on Google Images. It's a great tree, probably one of my favorite trees. Um, but I climbed that tree so much it was like the best tree for climbing because corkscrew willow it's right there in the name corkscrew it has a bunch of these like very it's like a thick it's a thick tree but it has these very like winding like corkscrewed branches and stuff so a lot of great handholds and ways to climb um i spent many a day up in that tree i would like read books in trees how weird is that to think that there was a time in my life when for fun i used to go outside climb a tree and read a book and now i sit in my room and scroll through twitter and get depressed (laughs) that's what i do for fun now but the thing is but the but the the, the, the thing okay go ahead sorry (laughs) the thing is is that if there were more climbable trees and you as an adult went to a park and climbed a tree and read a book either people would be like cool or people would be like why the is that guy in a tree? <laughs> What's that dude doing in a tree? Because I do feel like there is a certain age that you being in a tree is looked at poorly. Yeah, I think so. I, I would a, say 14. I have an Eno, which if you don't know, probably not because you're not a hipster from the Pacific Northwest. Um, and Eno <laughs> is like this very, it was very big at my high school. If you went to a, a high school with a lot of like outdoorsy people that wore Chacos, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and Eno is like this hangable hammock, but it's like it. Well, I guess all hammocks should be hangable. Otherwise, that defeats the purpose of the hammock. Anyway, it's a hammock, but it's like a, it's like kind of like a, a neoprene style material, kind of like parachute style material. But you yeah. like it's like portable and you can basically just it fits up in this nice little package. You take it with you and hang it wherever. Um, so I feel like when I was in high school, my friends and I would like go and like, you know, hang up our Enos and and sit in parks and hang i don't know it's weird to think about like kind of the intersection that like i grew up at and probably a lot of people my age grew up at where it's like for the first like 10 11 years of my life cell phones were still just like razors and motorolas and blackberries and stuff Mm -hmm. and the gaming consoles that we had were like xboxes and playstations and like a Nintendo DS and stuff like that. And so much of my younger life was just spent outside doing stuff. And then to go so quickly from that into just the world of like iPhones and tablets, like it, it literally felt like a, just like a snap in time. And then all of a sudden everybody had like an iPhone and a tablet and a laptop and all these other things. And it's yeah. like, I remember when Netflix, they sent DVDs to your door. Yep. God, that makes me sound so old. I'm 23 and I'm like, sound like, I remember back in my days, Netflix used to send you DVDs to your doorstep. Um, you're making me feel old because you're like, for the first 10 years of my life, cell phones were like razors. And I'm like, I remember when the razor like 
came out came before that are before time to the razor. <laughs> yeah. But just all that stuff like that weird nostalgic stuff like Netflix and or going to a blockbuster or renting a movie. Oh, like I, I remember having those nights as a family. We'd be like, all right, let's hit blockbuster on the way home. It's like it makes you think now too how many times on my like gift lists where I was like, I want this DVD and yeah. I want this CD. Yeah. I want this. And it's like everything's online now. I, one, I don't like, I'm not good at asking for gifts. Like, I, I find that like I'm pretty content. And the things that I like to spend money on, um, the things that I like to spend money on that I haven't already spent money on is usually because they're expensive. And like, I don't know, it feels weird to ask for, I don't, I don't like asking my parents for gifts. Like, I don't like asking them for, for help or money. Um, my parents are extremely generous and I know that if I ever did like did need help, they would be there like right there to help me out. But I've always felt weird about like asking for stuff. My brother opposite. He will ask for anything without shame. (laughs) He will just take stuff. Like my brother will just grab like an $80 bottle of like scotch from our our house and I'll be like, Hey dad, I'm taking this back up to Lewiston. Is that cool? And my dad's like, what? What? No. What? (laughs) And he's like, oh, come on, dad. You have so much. You have like three bottles of this. Why can't I have one? Meanwhile, I'm like, um, yeah, so like for Christmas, I don't know. Like I just, there's like this socks that I like. <laughs> um, but they're like $20 for a pack of three. So if that's like too expensive, then like don't worry about it. Um, I don't know. I've, I, my parents are very good gift givers. Um, they're terrible to shop for, though. Yeah, isn't that just the case, like, all the time? Like, my dad, I feel like I can buy for. My mom, I just want to hang out with you guys. Yeah. That's my gift. And I'm like, but I want to buy you something. My parents say the same thing. And I know it's true, because also my dad, like, just buys what, like, if there's something that they want, they just get it. Like, and which, you know, I'm very happy that they're in a position where they're able to do that. But it makes gift giving really damn hard, dad. My mom is a lot easier to shop for because I, uh, as the fashionable one in the family, um, I would say that my mother is also a fashionable one. Um, my dad and my brother are lost causes. Um, <laughs> my brother's wife, also fashionable. Like for them, I love shopping clothes for people. Mm-hmm. Like I love like last Christmas, I got my mom like this nice jacket that I saw from Anthropology. Um, and it was like, you know, it was an expensive ish jacket. It was like 250 bucks or something like that. I don't know. Um, but it was just this nice, like faux fur, like white jacket. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh my God, my mom would love that. Like, that's perfect. And it's a nice gift. Cause like, you know, uh, I know that my mom doesn't go shopping a lot because mm. my dad hates shopping. Um, <laughs> and so I know that she like, and it's also probably not a store that she would normally go into. So I'm like, oh, like that's a good gift. I know that my mom would like this. It would look good on her. Um, same with my brother's wife. I can see anything and be like, oh yeah, that's something that Sierra would totally wear. My brother is very easy to shop for. He's a simple man. All you have to do is, uh, buy a nice bottle of liquor that he likes or like give him like a video game. And he's like, that's epic. Like awesome. My father is an enigma (laughs) because he, he has no want. Yeah. My father is not like shopping clothes for him. Impossible. Because he's not someone that wears nice clothes. Like he's. I thought you were going to be like, he doesn't wear them. <laughs> no, <laughs> he doesn't wear clothes. I mean, but he does. He wears like shorts and t shirts everywhere. Yeah. And then, like, I don't know, he doesn't have the same like fashion sense as me. And so I'm like, well, I don't like know. I just, I don't know what to get for him. Like, so I don't buy him clothes. And then he owns a cigar lounge. So I can't buy him cigars because he already has all of them. <laughs> Every single cigar he has. He also has every single bottle of liquor. Can't even buy that for him. And then, like, I don't know. I used to, when I was a kid, I would just get him golf balls because I was like, oh, yeah, I mean, rack a Titleist Pro V1s, you know? Nothing can go wrong. But he doesn't golf enough for me to buy him that many golf balls. <laughs> and it also feels like such a cheap gift. Like, I'm like, I, I just feel like I'm copping out. Can you buy him, like a gift certificate to a golf course that he could go and, like, get tea times with i don't know i could but again that just feels like i don't know i want it to be something cool and thoughtful you know like i know when i buy my mom a nice jacket she's gonna be like oh i really like that jacket that's really cute and she'll wear it and it's like something that like you know even though it's just a piece of clothing it does have a little bit of meaning 
But yeah. like, I don't want to like give like, you know, my family, like here's these things that I really thought that you, you would like and that fit you and your personality. I'm like, here's your certificate to, to Branbury, Banbury, Banbury Golf Club in Eagle, Idaho. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to remember the name of a golf course. Um, and so, yeah, and it, it's hard. So I feel like I've resorted to trying to find them like gag gifts. Um, those could be, those could work, but that are like thoughtful. Like, oh, oh, this is a good one. One year, I think for Father's Day, I got him uh, a a driver cover. I feel like we're talking a lot about golf today. Um, <laughs> I got him a driver head cover for his club that had a photo printed of me on it. <laughs> That's awesome. But it was like this really <laughs> funny old picture from when I was a kid. But I'm like wearing aviators and my I'm wearing like a white uh, button up shirt, but it's fully unbuttoned. The collar's flared up. I'm wearing fingerless leather gloves and I've got drumsticks in my hands and I'm holding them crossways. And I look so freaking uh, metal. Man. Um, but like that was something. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that overall, so let's like take your dad out of the equation for a sec. Overall, would you say you're a good gift giver? Oh, yeah. I that's where I find like a lot of the joy in the holiday. I love giving people gifts and I love that I'm like now in a place financially like over the last couple of years where I've been able to because mm-hmm. like back in the day I was like I want to buy stuff for people but I don't have any money. Yeah. Like when I was like fresh before I moved to LA like back in those days I was like I really love like giving gifts to people because um, I think it's nice. I think that like you know when you put thought into something and like when you specifically shop for a person when you're like, I'm looking for a gift for my mom and I see something and I'm like, that is something that my mom would like and you put thought into it because like, I know my mom and I know who she is and what she likes and then it's like, that's really special to me and then to see them like smile when, you know, they open it up and and they see it and they're like, oh, and they really love it and you're like, I know you love it because I spent a lot of time putting thought into this and like thinking about what you would like. Um, That's really special to me and I love giving gifts and I'm like not great at like receiving gifts Um, but like, I love giving them and yeah. And so I would consider myself a good gift giver, but it's really hard with my dad. I can only buy him so many joke things with pictures of my face on it. I also feel that I am, I love giving gifts. I feel like I do try to put a lot of thought into things that I buy people. Have you ever given a gift that you were like, I nailed it? And then when you gave it to them, they were like, thanks. No, not that I know of. It's happened to me with only one particular friend. And I was like, kind of shocked. And it made me feel terrible. Because I was like, she loves pillows and comfy things and fuzzy things. Yeah. And she also loves plants. Yeah. Like a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So I got her this really dope looking, like fluffy, big, succulent pillow. Okay. It looks like a succulent. I think I've seen those. Those are sick. And I gave it to her. She's like, oh, cool. Thank you. And like, no. And I was like, and then I also gave her, which, and it was like a $40 pillow. Yeah. yeah. And then I gave her this, like, as an extra gift, like just like this $5 shirt that had like something on it. And she loved that so much more. So I'm yeah. like, okay, well, at least I got one thing right. But I like kind of like wanted to ask her, I'm like, you yeah. like pillows what and you like plants, it? but you don't like them together? I don't, I was like stuck on it. Don't mix the <laughs> hobbies. I was like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> no, I get that. It's hard to like say something bad about a gift. And I don't think I've been given like, I don't know. I mean, when I was a kid, it was like, I don't remember most like Christmases or like gifts that I got. I don't have a lot of like vivid memories of gifts that I got. Um, There are obviously a couple like, but I would say that like genuinely the gifts that I remember the most are the things that like, you know, had more meaning behind them. Like, you know, getting video games as a kid was awesome. But like, those aren't the gifts that I like really like remember and treasure, you know? But like my one of my favorite gifts that I've received in recent memory was um, it was a blanket that my grandma crocheted me. Oh, nice. Um, Yeah. And it was like, I mean, uh, and this is my grandmother on my mom's side, but she like crocheted me uh, and my brother both blankets. But like, if you know anything about crocheting it, one, it takes a long time and it takes a lot longer. Also, if you're using smaller threads, like the knots aren't getting as big. So like, you know, you see people on TikTok like crocheting these big chunky blankets, 
but they're using a really thick like thread. Yeah. So it doesn't take as long. I, when I saw this blanket, like for how big it was and how small the thread was, I was like, I immediately was just like, Nana, how long did this take you to crochet? She's like, oh, yeah. I've been working on it for like, you know, a little over a year. And I was like, what? She's like, yeah. She's oh like, just, you know, God. a little bit here and there over a year. And I was like, oh my God. And it's like one of my favorite blankets and it's so soft. But it's oh, like, that's awesome. that was like such a special gift. But I really do treasure just like being able to spend time with family. Yeah. Like, I do. It's like, especially since I moved away. I'm sure. Um, I remember the first time that I spent Christmas like, away from my family, it was so hard. I was like, I just miss being with them and spending time with them. Um, so I definitely value that a lot. And I like giving gifts. I, I don't think I can ever buy my dad a gift again though. Um, <laughs> because of the gift that I bought him last year. What did you buy him last year? Jamie, last year I went a little crazy. I went a little crazy with the retail therapy, even though none of the retail was for me. And I got some stuff, you know, from a family members and people. And I was like, all right, I've spent a little bit of money, but I was stuck. I was like, I can't, I don't know what to buy my dad. And I feel bad because I just bought like my family, like fairly nice gifts. And like, I don't want to show up and be like, dad, here's, you know, a $20 pack of Titleist Pro V1s. It was that situation. Yeah. And I was like, I got to get something nice for him, but I don't know what to get him. And then... My dad isn't a man of, um, like, he's not, like, a designer guy. Kind of almost as a joke, he loves Gucci. Um, but it's always, like, he, every time he uses he's like, oh, it's Gucci. He's like, ah, I got my Gucci on. <laughs> I think it's, like, an inside joke between him, my mom, and, like, two of their best friends. Um, but they, like, my mom has, like, just, like, a nice Gucci purse. Uh, and so I was at the, uh, I was at the mall in Glendale, Galleria. I go up to the like the Bloomingdale's area and there's a Gucci store in the Bloomingdale's. And I and I was like, I have to at least look. I start looking and I find this bag and it's like a fanny pack style bag, but like it could also like, you know, go crossbody. Mm -hmm. And I see it and it's like, it's black. It's got like um like a dark blue like strap with a red line in the middle. And I was like, that is the coolest, like one of the coolest bags I've ever seen. Like, like I would buy that for myself and wear it. Um, but I was like, oh. I was like, how sick would it be if yeah. I showed up to Christmas and gave my dad a Gucci fanny pack? And then I did it because I'm irresponsible <laughs> with money. <laughs> so I ended up dropping like a grand on my dad's Christmas gift. And like afterward, I was like, that was one of the most irresponsible purchases I've ever made. Um, like, why did I do that? Yeah. I, there's no reason to do that. But uh, yeah, my dad loved it. He thought it was amazing. Well, and he wears it all the time. But now I'm like, I can't top that. What do I do? Like, I, that was such a, was a great gift. And I can't, I can't spend, I can't buy another Gucci bag for him. <laughs> I don't have it within me. Um, Maybe you just need to s just go to the Galleria and let opportunity strike, you know? No, no. <laughs> um... <laughs> I need to not do that. This year, I'm taking it easy. I'm taking it easy on the gifts this year. I um, Maybe that's what you got to do. You're like all out one year, and you're like in the next couple of years, yeah. don't expect much, like, and then go all out I go again. to Christmas, and I'm like, actually, your gifts last year were so expensive. Could you give me cash <laughs> to like recoup my losses? No, I'm kidding. But um, I realize now that this podcast has just turned into the how hard it is to shop for my dad podcast. <laughs> Some other favorite gifts uh, that I have had throughout the years. I want to go quick. I'll do yeah. rapid fire. My sister every year gets everyone in like the family. And by everyone, I mean like me, my brother and his wife, my mom and my dad and a couple other people. One pair of Lululemon underwear. That's amazing. <laughs> and it's like the greatest thing ever. Because like Lululemon underwear, they're super soft. They're so nice. But they're, you know, expensive. It's like whatever, like $14 a pair or something like that. Which for underwear um, is like. It's like pretty expensive. Um. And so every year she'll just send like a joking text to her, like our family group chat, like uh, everyone's still the same size from last year <laughs> <laughs> asking about the underwear. <laughs> um, and it's, yeah, it's great. Uh, another of my favorite gifts that I've received, my dad's best friend, Steve, um, from college, mm -hmm. uh, who he's known for ages. He's, well, I always, he was like one of those people in my life that was like, he was uncle Steve growing up. Mm -hmm. Um, like he was just like a, and he's like one of my favorite people. He's hilarious, very eccentric, weird guy. Love him to death. One year he gave me a, he wrapped a taxidermied rat 
It was like, I don't know if it was actual taxidermy or if it was like faux taxidermy, but I just opened it up and it was just this rat. And it was like stuffed and like sitting up on its hind legs with its little arms out. I kept that thing for so long. I would have it just sit next to my bed or on my desk. I think it might still be in my room at home, like just sitting on a shelf. But it is one of the greatest gifts. And like no context. Like it was just like no. you guys have never had a conversation about rats. No, nothing. He just handed me. And it was like along with like another gift that he gotten me. Because he would do that. He would always like kind of cobble together like a few different things and then like kind of wrap them all together. But one of the things was just a taxidermied rat, which is um, which is hilarious to me. That is great. I freaking love that. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the best gifts I've ever received. Um, you want to know the one gift I gave in my life that almost cost me my life? It's the gift of my presence. I'm sorry, that was a really dramatic intro into the story that I've been wanting to tell for a long time. <laughs> the story about how I almost died. Christmas Eve 2018. I was working at a bakery in West Hollywood at this time. We were open Christmas Eve. I had told my parents, I was like, hey, I'm not going to be able to make it home for Christmas. I'm working Christmas Eve. They were like, that's totally okay. We won't book you a flight or anything. At this time, I was driving a Mini Cooper. That's going to be important later. I checked my work schedule. And I'm looking, and I'm like, okay, Christmas Eve, we close like we close early. And then Christmas Day, we had off. The bakery was closed. The following two days after Christmas, I also happened to have off. So I was like, I have three days off in a row. Plans started brewing in my head. I'm like, what if, what, what if I leave the bakery, pack all my stuff, I drive to work, get off work, immediately shoot out. 5 p.m., <laughs> I get off work, I start zooming. And I told my grandpa, my grandpa lives um, here in California, so I had told him about my plans. Anyway, I get a text from him like that day. He's like, hey, be careful driving out um, of like up through Bishop because the fastest way to drive from L.A. to Idaho is to take a straight shot <clears throat> through the middle of nowhere, Nevada. Mm. You drive through like the, the, the one town that you drive through Nevada is like called Hawthorne. Anyway. I'm dri- I, I'm like on the road, I'm driving, get a text from my grandpa, and he's like, hey, be careful driving out of Bishop, California, because that's like on the border of mm-hmm. California, Nevada. He's like, apparently there's like, you know, some snowstorm warnings. I forgot that snow existed. I'd been living, <laughs> I, I'd been living in LA for like six months, and I forgot that snow Already existed. Already snow? What is that? Because it was like, I'm, you know, I'm from, I'm from places that have four seasons, but as soon as it hits October, like my time, my sense of time was all screwed up. Because I was like, it's October and it's warm outside. So I'm like, oh yeah, it'll be easy peasy. Drive right through the middle of nowhere, Nevada. Like just shoot up into Idaho. I can do that drive in 11 and a half hours and I'll show up Christmas morning, like bright and early. Like it'll be A-okay and I'll surprise everyone. So then I'm like, oh shoot, snow exists. But by this time, I was like two hours on the road already mm. driving up and I was like, I can't turn back now. I'm on the road. It's getting darkish, you know, fall back and whatnot. Daylight savings. And I'm driving up, I get to Bishop, California, and I see this big sign that says, if continuing on the 365, which is like a highway, Mm -hmm. snow chains or snow tires required. And I was like, oh, shoot. Thankfully, I wasn't continuing on the 365 because uh, I was taking the more direct route, which goes through the desert. Anyway, I drive out of Bishop, and I am on now what is the 360, I think. Which okay. is like a two lane road mm-hmm. that winds through like these hills in Nevada that are like kind of on the on the right side of the Sierra Nevada mountains. So that okay. big mountain range runs through California. I'm kind of just in the foothills area. I start driving. I'm looking at the temperature gauge on my dash, and it's like dropping, and it like then it gets below freezing, and I was like, Oh, oh god, no! I was like, It might be snowing. <laughs> so like all of a sudden, I'm tense, and I drive into these foothills immediately. Snow. Oh, no. And I'm the only car. And so I'm like driving 30 miles per oh hour God, through these Trevor. winding roads. I'm stressed. In snow. And I'm sitting there like I'm in the middle of nowhere. If I like, if my car gets stuck, I'm in the middle of nowhere. I, there's no cell service. I kept looking at my phone. There's, I had no service. Oh, my I'm God. I'm by myself in Trevor. my Cooper. <laughs> and I'm like ill prepared. No, no, no snow chains. The only, my saving grace was that I happened to, by chance, get my tires changed on my Mini Cooper like three days before I left. So if I'd had my old tires, probably would have died. 
Oh my God, Trevor. I'm driving through these hills. It is snowing. I am so tense. And like this, the adrenaline's like pumping in me because I'm like, I just have to keep going. I can't stop. Like if I stop, I won't be able to get going again. So like I'm driving and it, it was, it felt like so long. It felt like so long. So then I drop out of the hills and I start driving into Hawthorne. Snow clears up and I'm like, all right. The worst of it is behind We're me. We're chilling. I was like, I'm good. I get through Hawthorne. I gas up. <clears throat> and at that point, uh, it was probably like one or two in the morning or maybe like midnight-ish. And I called my friend Nick from back home in Idaho because I was like, dude, I was like, you can't tell anyone because this is a surprise. Also, I still didn't let my parents know where I was. Like, I didn't even think to be like, yeah, I should call them and tell them what I'm doing. I was like, I, then it, that would ruin the surprise. So the only person that knew where I was was my grandpa and my friend Nick, because I called him and was like, dude, you can't tell anyone, but I'm in the middle of nowhere right now and I'm scared for my life. And I just wanted to like call and talk to someone uh, while I have cell service. Yeah. So I was talking to him, you know, shooting the breeze or whatever. Um, and then I start to hit like no service again. I'm like, all right, all right, Nick, bye. And then I hit the uh, the 80, just hit a whiteout blizzard. Oh, no. Oh, no. And I'm in my Mini Cooper. And, and mind you, again, it's like four in the morning. So I'm exhausted. I've been up for like almost 24 hours at this point. I rolled down my window and was blasting music because I was like, I got to stay awake. And I'm like trudging along like 40 miles per hour, just rolling along this interstate. Maybe saw like a couple semis drive by me. Oh my God. And I'm just in this blizzard for like hours until I made it to Winnemucca. I would have started crying. Winnemucca, Nevada. If you've never been there, don't go. It's great. Um, <laughs> I roll into Winnemucca at like first light. And I'm like, oh my God, I made it to Winnemucca. This is the great, I've, I've, I've actually put the worst of it behind me. Trucking right along. And by this point, I start to see some snow removal equipment. And I'm like, oh, I'm really in the clear. I was like, there's snow, you know, plows, like clearing the roads. I was like, I'm good. So then on the drive back to Idaho, there's this stretch <clears throat> where you cut through the corner of Oregon to then come back around into Idaho. So you're in Nevada. You're up in the corner of Nevada. Okay. You cut into Oregon. I cut into Oregon um, and there's some like hilly roads that go through some like hill areas. Mm -hmm. Straight fog. Oh, just, so now you can't see. Just fog as thick, as thick as I've seen it and ice on the roads. So then I'm like, God, when will these trials end? I felt like freaking Frodo taking the ring to Mordor. I swear. It was like one thing after another. I was like, I can't get out of this. I'm... So, you know, out of the frying pan into the fire, oh I start driving God. and I'm just sitting there. I turn my lights off because I was like, I actually can see better in the fog. Like I couldn't see like three feet in front of my car. Yeah. I was like, I see better if my lights are off because the fog was just glaring like, the light back into my eyes. Oh my That's God. That's how thick it was. So I turn, I turn my lights off, turn my fog lights on. So just the little orange ones. <clears throat> and I, I could barely see the road. There was this one truck in front of me with like a trailer and I swear, I was just like trying to stay behind them the whole time. In my Mini Cooper, I'm like, I just got to stay behind them and then I'll know that yeah. I'm on the road. And I hope that they don't pull off the road for any reason. Right. They just go into some like <clears throat> random dirt yeah. road. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. I would have followed them anywhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> they took you right back down to LA. <laughs> <laughs> so somehow I made it through that. I dropped down back into Idaho. Um, if you're familiar at all with Southwestern Idaho, I went through Jordan Valley, which is the way to get into Boise. Um, and from there, there was a little bit of snow on the ground, but I mean, it was smooth sailing from there. And I was like, wow, I actually did it. So then I show up and I've been up for like over 24 hours at this point because the drive that normally takes me 12 hours in good conditions took me probably like 14, 15 in the snow just because I was driving so slow at some parts. Yeah. So I show up, I've been up for over 24 hours. I've been driving for like 15 and I just like am so haggard. Like I just could feel it in my face. I was like, I'm dead. And I go up and I like knock on my parents' door and my mom opens the door and she's like, Trevor, what? And I was like, ah, Merry Christmas. <laughs> I go in and my dad's cooking breakfast and he's like, what's up, Tony? I mean, you survived. So, I did. So that's did. very, very good. And I'm sure your parents were really happy to have you. Yeah. No, they were. It was a great surprise. My mom cried <clears throat> when I when I showed up. And then I told her the story, and she's like, "Wow, you're a dumbass, Trevor." Yeah. And my dad was like, "I've been there, man. I get it. Sometimes you just gotta you just gotta drive and keep on driving." And and sounds like my nightmare. <laughs> I would have been crying the whole time. I cried last Christmas, after day after. 
I met my boyfriend and his family up in Tahoe. Yeah. I, like, I've been in the snow before. I've gone, you know, plenty of times, but yeah. I, I personally don't like to drive in it. Anyways, I'm hungover. Yeah. Because Christmas is a big ordeal at my house. Classic case. Yeah. Yeah. Barely slept uh, because I needed to be at the airport yeah. at like five in the morning to catch the slide out to Tahoe because they all drove up Yeah. before. So then I was like, all right, I'll just meet you there. So I'm sleep deprived, hungry, hungover by myself, get to the airport and they're like, oh, you know, T- Tahoe's a turbulent airport. And I'm like, wonderful. Yeah. So I land and then I'm no service. Anywhere, right? Yeah. I'm trying to call my boyfriend. Can't get a hold of him. Yeah. Trying to text his brother and be like, are you with Casey? Like, can we, what's good? Yeah. So no one knows where Casey is, but he left to go get me two hours ago. <laughs> so he's stuck on the road somewhere. Yeah. I'm just crying because I'm in the <laughs> airport by myself. I was a to- I was in toddler mode, f- full toddler yeah. meltdown mode. Yeah. Silently. Just had a giant, like literally. Yeah. I'm, I asked three taxis. I'm like, can you take me to Tahoe? And they're all like, they started laughing at me. They were like, no, so we're not going to, we're not going to Tahoe. They're like, yeah. I was like, great, wonderful. I, I was about to literally catch a flight home. I was like, I'm not going. Like, no one can take me there. No. Finally, this 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 one taxi driver, Halal, he was the nicest man ever. He's like, you want to go to Tahoe? And I was like, yeah. He's like, I can take you there. I have like, cha- I have all the whole shebang on on my car. And I was like, all right, great. Get in the car. We're going, and, like, almost immediately, we are going, like, three miles per hour. You can't, it's like, the, it's like noon at this point. Yeah. It's just white. You don't yeah. see anything. You yeah. don't see anything at all. When I do pass by cars, there's, like, a semi-truck that's turned over on one side. There's, all these people are stuck on the side of the road. I was like, this is the apocalypse. This yeah. is the snow apocalypse, and yeah. I am here yeah. with Halal, and I don't, <laughs> by myself, I don't know what to do. And and my boyfriend's trying to call me, and he's calling me, and I, I've been in the car for so long at this point, too. Yeah. It's like, we're not moving anywhere. It's like crying. I was like, why did you tell me to come here? I was <laughs> like, I don't. And I was like, I'm just, I was like, I know you can't do anything, but I'm just, I just feel like, I wasn't even scared that we we're going to get an accident. I was like, I'm just scared that he's going to be like, this is as far as I can take you. Yeah. And we're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So finally, finally, after so long, we get past that. And we're getting up to where the cabin is. You can't even drive up to the cabin. So my yeah. boyfriend had to drive down. Yeah. This poor man. He was like, also, he's like, don't worry. We're going to get there. He's like, do you, <laughs> you could take a nap. I'll wake you up. He's like, or you here's some Red Bull. I have yeah. t- he's like, here's some tissues. I was like, you're a very nice man. Thank you. <laughs> and I finally get there. And when I finally get there, we tipped this guy so much money. Yeah. When I get out, he's like, okay. He's like, I have a ham sandwich and a white claw ready for you. I was like, thank you. <laughs> and I, it's like everyone hugged me. They're like, you made it. And you I was like, it. I was literally like, I literally was like, I never want to experience that again. You're and like, I wasn't this is even, like the movie Everest. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, and I'm not even driving. Yeah. I'm, and I, I was like, it was a factor of things. Maybe if I had slept more, whatever. But I was like, this is terrifying. Come yeah. to find out after that weekend, because I had a great time once I was there. Worst snowstorm Tahoe has seen in 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The guy Great even. Great weekend to come up. Right? The guy even was like, you, he's just like, I've been driving up here for 18 years. He's like, I've never seen it this bad. And yeah. I was like, halal, go back to the other stuff you were saying, because yeah. that does not make me feel better. <laughs> so no. the fact that you did that alone in a mini Cooper. Yeah. I, I just would have, I would have passed away in your car. No, it was um, it was insane. <laughs> there were a lot of times, like I think there was something primal within me, like some some like survival instincts, where I just kind of turned into this like this like predator that was like uh, my mission is to get home. Because there were times when I was like, I was literally driving, and I was like, I could pull off to the road, like to the side of the road, and just like you know sleep for like an hour. I'm so tired, like and just get rejuvenated, and then pick back up. Like I'll still make it in the morning. And then I remember just thinking to myself, I was like. If I stop this car, I'm not going to make it there. I won't make it. <laughs> I was like, I have to keep going. And I literally, like, half the drive, I swear, was just spent with the windows down, snow blowing into my face. Because, like, I got to stay awake and I got to keep pushing. And, like, I think I stopped for gas, like, three times, like, on the whole, like, 14, 15 hour drive. That's crazy. And I, was just, I just pushed through. And my dad was like, dude, I get it. He calls it a bubblegum run. 
because you're chewing bubble gum the whole time to stay awake. <laughs> Yeah. He's like, hey, Trevor, I've been there, man. I think it was like a proud dad moment for him. He's like, you did something stupid that you shouldn't have done that I probably also would have done, but you came through it unscathed because you're a champ. We didn't really get to gifts too much, but... No, but it was like great holiday stories. I loved it. I, I love great holiday really, stories. I really wanted to tell that story. Everybody, I asked you for tweets about like what are the best slash worst slash most memorable gifts that you've received. <laughs> One time a couple, hold on, this is Austin. One time a couple that I would babysit for gave me a bootleg He-Man action figure for Christmas. Had never spoken about He-Man at any point in my life before then. 15 plus years later, I still don't understand why they chose that of all things. Hey, <laughs> don't like look a, a gift. gift horse in the mouth, okay? Sounds like a good gift to me. He-Man is sick, dude. That's, you're ungrateful. <laughs> um, this one's good. I grew up a Jehovah Witness, so we didn't do Christmas, but one year my dad got me this weird collectible DC, the clothing brand DC, um, which is hilarious to me, action figure. It was effing weird, but I loved it still. I found it. Look at this funky guy. And then he posted a picture. I will post the picture in the video. What a weird action figure to make and for someone to buy. Yeah, 100%. Um, Okay, so Alex said, <clears throat> two years ago, my dad was excited to give me anime car seat covers for Christmas. He accidentally bought the hentai ones. That is absolutely that is so funny. Hilarious. That is so funny. If you don't know what we're talking about when we say the hentai ones, it's the one with all the anime girls doing the like ahegao face or whatever where their tongue is out and they're yeah. like drooling. Um, that, that is so funny. The video uh, that Jamie will put in the video version yeah. of the show. Very funny. Um, my uncle liked to give us money hidden in everyday objects. So when he gave me a tube of toothpaste, I legit sat there and squeezed it all out. He forgot to put the money in that. Tube. <laughs> There's so many layers to this that make it so funny. Thank you, Lauren. One, that an uncle likes to hide money in random objects for kids to find. It's like a little like game, um, yeah. which is great. Two, the uncle got Lauren a tube of toothpaste for Christmas. Yeah, what's um, that trying to say? Which is so funny because it didn't have any money. So it literally was just a tube of toothpaste, which is hilarious. Three, that as a child, you could bring yourself to believe that someone would have shoved dollar bills, like rolled up dollar bills yeah, inside like, a tube how? of toothpaste and that you'd be able to then squeeze them out. That is so funny to me. Because if you put a dollar in a tube of toothpaste, you're never getting that dollar back. No, well, like first, you'd have to like cut into the tube. Yeah, like you would have to roll it up like so yeah. tightly and smallly, mm. and you would have to probably squeeze out a little bit of yeah. toothpaste to like create space. Yeah, no, that's hilarious. That is a freaking good one. Um, this one was so sweet. Okay, growing up, I loved the Lilo and Stitch TV show and wanted a book of all the experiments from the show, but a book like that didn't exist. My brother made me an entire guide of over 100 pages that had a photo of the experiment description, first appearance, etc. That is so sweet. That's so sweet. I'm not like I'm not crying. <laughs> <coughs> I swear I'm not crying. All that was in this mug was uh Dr. Vanilla Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. And it was only half full, and my throat got really dry when I was telling my big long story. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have So my throat's dry and it's causing me to tear up, but this is very sweet. Um, wow, what a brother. Literally, my brother would never do anything like that. Neither me. would mine. I mean, he would do thoughtful things, but yeah. not that. Over a hundred pages. That's like so awesome. That is so sweet. Um, worst but funniest in hindsight gift I got was from my grandma on my father's side, a t-shirt with the text, the man, the myth, the legend. And under the legend text was an arrow pointing down towards your crotch. I was 13. Oh hours. no. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't understand English very well. That is so sweet. That's that is endearing. so funny and innocent and just what a hilarious moment. Because he's she's trying yeah. to like build up her grandson. Yeah. She's like, I do think that like, you're a legend. Yeah, like, you're like you're awesome. awesome. Yeah. And then like maybe she's like, I don't know, maybe in English they point arrows down instead of up. No, that's that is so funny. <laughs> and as a 13 year old, it should be like, yeah. This wiener. <laughs> and then it's funny because then, too, if he were ever to wear that shirt and his friends would probably think it's funny, be like, where'd you get it? And to be like, my grandma my got grandma it. My grandma got it for me. <laughs> yeah. No, that is that is hilarious. Uh, Lily Neal, uh, a.k.a. Link's daughter, said, 
One time my friend gave me a vinegar bottle full of maple syrup. I mean, why? why? But also, maybe it was really good maple syrup. Maybe they have a pancake thing that they do. There's no context. But like, why? I don't know. Why in a vinegar bottle is also like, why? Yeah, why did why? you empty the vinegar? Do you think they put the vinegar in the maple syrup bottle? Is this just like some part of an elaborate joke that I don't get or that I didn't get to hear the second part of? Gonna need some context there, Lily. Um, Best gift, but worst delivery. My parents got me a 3DS one year and forgot about it and gave it to me three months later when they found it. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's like, that's funny. Uh, that's a good one. Like, man, the Christmas gifts were a little light this year. And then like three months later, they're like, oh, we forgot to give you one. Uh, this one's good. Not mine, but I will never forget the year my dad got nothing but underwear. Everybody got him underwear. Even the person who drew his name at work got him underwear, lol. That's a great prank to pull on someone. Yeah. That is a really funny, if you know that you're going to be at like a family gathering and everyone's, you know, like good spirited and stuff for like you to plan something like, hey, this year we're all going to get dad underwear and everybody gets him underwear. That's funny. That's like a good practical joke. But then like pretend like you didn't know about it. Yeah. Just be like, oh my God, you got him underwear too? Like, that's funny. I want to do that. Maybe I'll talk to my, talk to the fam this year. Do that. Dad, don't listen to that part. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you listen to my show. Um, my mother bought me a printer for my birthday in elementary school. I was not allowed to use this printer. I don't think that that counts as a gift to you then. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't understand. She's like, here you go, honey. Like, I, that. I don't know. Like, yeah. how would that work? How would the giving part work? Like, the the unwrapping of. Yeah, I don't know. That's weird. Like, hey, check out that thing over there on the desk that's all wrapped up. Open it up. And the kid just opens it. What's a Xerox? Yeah. <laughs> I always wonder, like, what goes through people's heads when they buy gifts. They're like, I would like this. And it's like, yeah, you. Yeah. But you are not buying for you. Yeah. I don't know. Well, th this was a fun little holiday episode. Um, pretty lighthearted, kept it fun, which is pretty big for me. Trevor didn't die on his didn't way die. to uh, Idaho. I got to tell my epic tale that I hope to adapt into a, a seven film movie franchise someday. Um, I hope that everyone has a great holiday season. I know that the holidays can be tough uh, for some people. Um, and for others, they're really great. Whatever holidays you're celebrating, I hope that they are filled with joy and love. And if the holidays are tougher for you, um, you know, just wish me a merry whatever holiday you want in my Twitter DMs. And uh, I'll respond and be like, Merry Hanukkah, Merry Kwanzaa, Merry Christmas, um, Merry, what's another, Arbor Day, Merry Arbor Day. Uh, that's not soon. But still, send me a happy Arbor Day. <laughs> Don't drive through the middle of nowhere uh, at three in the morning in the snow to surprise your family. It's just be safe. Be safe when you travel. It's a good good rule of thumb. Don't follow in my footsteps. I'm stupid. Um, no, but seriously, thank you everyone for listening to Trevor Talks Too Much. Uh, check us out every Tuesday. We got a new episode coming at ya. Check the video version out following Monday. Leave a review, leave a comment, leave a, a winky face uh, in the Apple reviews and say, hey, Trevor, nice socks. Because I've got nice socks on today and I want everyone to know. I will be snuggled up in about 30 minutes with a nice mug of cocoa on my couch reading a book. That's how I'm going to spend my evening. Bye. Bye. <laughs>